Hey there everyone, welcome back to Dan Cave and welcome to part two of the Hasegawa 24 scale Subaru Legacy build. So, it's a pretty long video, so I'm not going to hang around too long. So part one covered the kind of bodywork prep, paint, decal 2K, uh, got the interior tub, chassis and roll cage painted in body colour as well, so all that's been prepped. Uh, so particularly those last bits lead nicely into what's going to be covered in part two. So part two is going to cover the interior and the chassis and running gear. Uh, so that's it. Uh, but before we jump over to the action, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. If you're already a subscriber, please like the video as well. Uh, the more videos I can get to 50 likes, the more I get recommended, the better it is for the channel. Uh, so yeah, so thank you for joining me. Sit back, relax, enjoy. I'll come back at the end for a little bit of a summary. Uh, but without further ado, let's head on over and get to the action. So, rightly so, as I just said, straight into the action. So, part one, uh, got the interior tub and the chassis already painted in the body colour. Uh, so with the tub done, uh, it's time to get on to getting all the other interior parts off the sprue. So as you can imagine, there's the usual kind of bits, handbrake, gear lever, steering wheel, uh, steering wheel column, etc. Some pedals and a couple of seats as well. So they'll all go through the kind of normal process, uh, clip them off the sprue, clean up the attachment points. Uh, using some UMP sanders in this case. Uh, clean up is relatively good on these parts. That the, There's not too much flash and there's not really that much of a seam line on most of these parts. So they clean up pretty quickly. The seats themselves need a little bit more work. There is a little bit of a seam line around the outside. So we need to dig in, well not literally, but uh, dig in a little bit deeper with the sander and work your way through that seam line and get those seats nice and smooth. Uh, now, the openings for the seatbelt harnesses themselves, uh, they do need a little bit of work. Uh, so just some gentle work with some files just to open them up a little bit more and to smooth off the edges. Once all that cleanup is done, uh, you can get a collection of uh, coffee stirrers, uh, some blue tack, some various clips, etc. And all those can be used just to mount all those parts ready for painting or at least ready for priming anyway in the first instance now the interior tub is painted in blue uh, there is a number of uh, kind of detail paint steps to the interior uh, the side cards are in a gray color uh, so i'm going to just use ump gray primer for that gray uh, but there is also some parts which are in black some are in metallic some parts, uh, so there's basically an oxygen bottle in green and a fire extinguisher in red. So what we're going to do is basically mask everything up because uh, everything is blue. It's just going to get a coat of grey primer on top. The grey primer will help with the brighter colours as well. So we'll start off by masking for the grey. So once that grey primer is done, we've masked up a little bit more and we can paint some of those areas in black. Uh, so there's a few items, could be electronic boxes, toolboxes, whatever. Uh, so we're just getting a coat of, I think it's possibly Ravel Matte Black. Uh, so if it's Ravel Matte Black, that's been thinned 50-50 with UMP acrylic thinners, uh, sprayed through the Apex airbrush. So as I was priming in grey, I basically primed all the other interior parts in grey while I was at it. Uh, however, most of those parts will end subsequently to get painted black anyway. So I think for these parts, I've switched over to a semi-gloss black, uh, which I think is Ravel. I'm just looking on the shelf. Uh, no, I think it's actually X18 I've used in this instance. That's X18. That's also thinned with mr hobby acrylic thinners so 
Once the black bits are painted on the interior tub, everything else is masked off and some green is used for the oxygen bottle. Uh, so I believe that's a Ravel uh, green paint. Can't remember which number. But it was just a bright green and a similar process was done for the red fire extinguisher. So the red doesn't go down brilliantly over a grey primer, but it goes down acceptably well. So, as you can see, all that masking can now be removed. Uh, and that reveals the various areas that we've painted. There will be an, a couple of steps of brush painting as well, just to fill in uh, some of the details, like the straps on the, on the two bottles. That'll get done in silver. Uh, and there's also an outline of a tire iron for the front as well. So the dashboard was painted in semi-gloss black. Uh, the main instrument panels or the instrument display panel on this, if you look at reference photos, it's in a metallic red color. Uh, so we need to mask up so we can spray that metallic red. So off to the spray booth. So we're going to mix some Ravel aluminium, a couple of drops of that, mixed in with uh, quite a healthy few drops of uh, Ravel red, which again, I can't remember which red it is. But that's basically just a couple of drops of silver, just to add a little bit of a metallic tone to it. Not really a specific mix. Uh, with just something that looks good to my eye, at least. So I think that is Ravel 131 Fiery Red. So once that's been sprayed, you see how that's come out. It's quite, it's quite dark red, but it's got a little bit of a metallic tone to it. And that uh, seems to match what's shown in reference pictures for these uh, Subaru Legacy rally cars. So once again, we can get rid of all that masking tape. Because we've used some good primer, uh, some good coats of paint, uh, we've detacked the masking tape. Uh, there's very limited risk of any of that paint lifting. And as you can see, none actually has. So that can be set aside and it's now time for what was probably the most challenging part of this build so far. Uh, it's got my head in the way. Uh, and that was the photo etch seat belts. Now, photo etch seat belts are always a little bit of work anyway. But for some reason, these particular seat belt photo etch parts gave me no end of trouble. Now, on the left hand side, you can see you've got some ribbon, but underneath that is the material that has to go provide, which is kind of a red kind of plastic sheet, uh, which you have to cut into strips of an appropriate thickness. Now, I think the ribbon looks better. However, the ribbon I've got, I think is slightly more than the two mil required. Just a little bit over, but just too much to make it very difficult to pass it through the photo etch. So I don't have any other ribbon at the moment of a suitable width so i've had to persevere with this stuff and as you can see i managed to get the first kind of leading edge uh, in through the required edge of the photo etch but it's not quite gone in properly so i've removed it and now i'm just going to trim off the end again just to trim it to a sharper point once again Certainly trimming it to a point makes it pass in easily, but because the actual width of the actual seatbelt material was a little bit too wide for these photo etch buckles, uh, it was quite challenging. So you could get the start of it through. It was just very difficult to get the rest of it through. But being slightly crazy, uh, I persevere. The real solution here would have been to get 
it's a better ribbon so as you can see i've pretty much had to force it through uh plenty of kind of forceful dragging and that's just one side of the buckle i still need to get it back through and feed that end of the the seatbelt material through as well but just about managed to get the first bit through And there we go, slides a bit better there. But that's taken quite a lot of time just to get one buckle done. So because of the difficulties of actually, there is a, there is intermediate buckles for each of the lengths of, of seatbelt harness. Uh, I've decided not to add those. Uh, it's not ideal, but I don't think it takes too much away from them. So basically each seatbelt kind of shoulder strap is going to get an intermediate buckle. Uh, there'll be the end piece, uh, and then there's the attachment to the structure of the car as well, so they'll be added as well. And as you can see, just getting through the second side of that buckle has proved very, very difficult. Quite an amount of force needed to try and get that through. So this is definitely a study in perseverance. A little bit of stupidity. I think the best solution would have been to get some better material. I really do in retrospect, but that's not what I did. I kind of persevered, figured out a couple of different ways to improve how I could put them as I progressed. Uh, some of those were basically trim a little bit off the edge uh, towards the end of the seat belt. Uh, where I'm cutting the, the kind of entry point, uh, either use super glue to kind of seal over the end of it to make sure it doesn't fray as easily, or even use a little bit of fire from a lighter or a candle just to get rid of any fraying. Uh, also, for some reason, the double sided tape I was using was not playing ball. It was just proving to be a bit of a frustrating experience. But I've almost managed to get one seat belt, one shoulder harness done of one seat. So here I am struggling just to get that in. And I think I've just about done it. Yep, I have. And now I need to make sure that I can fold it over correctly. Yeah, this has not been an easy process. Plus, where I've put those intermediate uh, strap uh, photo etch buckles, it actually has made the decal placement not entirely great on this particular seat. So, you don't want to sit here for hours and hours and spend the amount of time I did. Uh, so, what I've done is I've speeded up the footage so you can see me struggle. Uh, a little bit faster than I would have done if I kept all the footage in for this. So, almost got one seatbelt done. Don't know how long that's taken. Quite a bit of time. That's finally in place. And then I can finally move on to getting the second shoulder harness in. So let's just pop in a little bit of background music and let's see how the overall seatbelt work progresses.
So seatbelts all done. Uh, it's time to turn attention to the dashboard. Uh, so as you can see, the seats are installed. Uh, seatbelts have been attached out. Now, you can kind of see from the footage quite a lot of struggles with the seatbelts. Uh, yeah, perhaps in a future video, uh, I may try and cover seatbelts in a little bit more detail than I've covered them in this particular video. Because uh, describing what I was doing would have involved a certain amount of swearing because it was a very frustrating process. So there we go. So on the dashboard itself, so after masking and painting the metallic red, uh, there is a few areas on the front face that are uh, actually in black. So just using a little bit of semi-gloss black uh, just to detail paint those areas using a paintbrush. Uh, so as you can see, I'm using Army Painter brushes, uh, using a detail brush from Army Painter, which uh, I do find these brushes very, very nice to use. Uh, it's only on acrylics. They do clean up pretty well, uh, and they do maintain their points. They don't lose uh, any bristles. Uh, and overall, I find them very, very effective. Uh, they're not the cheapest, but they're certainly not overly expensive. Uh, I've had a couple of them before, used them years ago with enamel paints, and they lasted years with enamels. Uh, again, the thing with paintbrushes is you just need to make sure you look after them, uh, clean them thoroughly. Uh, I use kind of home brew of brush cleaner, uh, which includes some relatively random uh, ingredients like castile soap and almond oil. Uh, certainly the almond oil helps keep the bristles nice and soft. Uh, and it's only a tiny amount, so you don't really see that affect uh, the paint at all. Uh, and it just helps maintain the condition of those brushes. So as you can see, I'm just filling in a few little details. Uh, looking at reference photos, there's only a certain few areas that are in the metallic red. Uh, the rest of the front face is kind of just black. That's just a case of using the brush uh, nice and gently. Good steady hand. And there we go. We've ended up with a painted dashboard. So there's lots of little buttons and switches on the dashboard. Uh, various color callouts on the instruction sheets. Have a look at your reference photos or just go with the instruction sheet, whichever suits you best. Uh, but all those switches will get dabbed in using a very fine brush also. Uh, so as you can see, slightly off screen, uh, just filling in some of the last remaining details. Uh, in this case, just using yellow. Uh, color which seems to match uh, what the call out is, is on the actual instruction sheet, but also seems to match uh, some of the reference photos I've seen of not this exact car, but similar cars, uh, or at least same make and model Subaru Legacy RSs from that era. But overall, with a little bit of care, uh, you'll end up with a nicely detailed instrument cluster. Uh, so there's, of course, the obligatory couple of decals to go for the dials. Uh, as you can imagine, one's a speedo, one will be a rev counter. So they just pop into their recesses nicely. And then, of course, once they're popped in place, Use something like a cotton bud just to remove any excess moisture. And of course, you can add some decal solutions as well just to soften them and get them to conform nicely into the recess that's provided on the instrument panel. But overall, I think that looks quite good and will look quite effective uh, in the car. And as you can see, I'm using a little bit of decal solution just to soften them in place. So that is all coming together nicely. Uh, so seats are in. 
dashboard is almost 100% complete. Uh, so that those decal solutions, decals will be let dry. Uh, they will soften them a little bit. So, of course, you've got the seats in place. There's a couple of other bits. There's a couple of helm. There's a helmet holder, a gear stick, handbrake lever. So all those have been popped in with a little bit of CA glue. And now we're just going to pop in the roll cage. Of course, the roll cage itself was painted in part one in the body color. Uh, and there's six attachment points. So a couple of little drops of CA glue. And that's enough to secure the roll cage in place. So you just want to make sure you get them lined up properly. Make sure the actual attachment points sit in uh, to the recesses. And a little bit of gentle pressure. And that should grip relatively instantly. So once that's nicely set, we can now add the instrument panel itself. Uh, so that kind of sits on the center transmission tunnel uh, and then the roll cage routes through uh, the gaps provided at the side of the dashboard. Yeah, and that all sits in nicely as shown. Hold it in place for a couple of seconds and that CA glue will grip. So steering wheel has also been added. Uh, so basically we've ended up with a complete interior. So the interior done and set aside, I can now turn my attention to the running gear. Uh, so things like the engine transmission, curbside, so there's a minimal kind of engine detail. Uh, to the engine, gearbox and kind of dry shafts are all on one complete part. So there is the obligatory clean up on these. So I've gone back to using a file uh, for cleaning up sprue attachment points. Uh, so these parts had a little bit more flash. So the file is a little bit more aggressive, kind of cuts through the flash a little bit quicker than some of the sanders. So once I'm happy with that, I can then get the front suspension, front steering components, front subframe, all of those parts removed from the sprue. Usual cleanup applied. Then, of course, there's a stone guard for underneath uh, the engine, so a sump guard. And then there's a one piece exhaust. But actually, technically, it's two pieces because there is a very, very small end piece which goes on it. But it's basically one assembly that runs from the engine all the way to the back. So, as with a lot of parts, a little bit of cleanup is required. I kind of started that process using files because it's a little bit more flashy than some other parts on the kit. So once all that cleanup work is done, uh, everything gets mounted and then it's off to the spray booth to begin priming everything in UMP black. So with this Hasegawa plastic, I've tended to find you need kind of like a light dust coat coat first uh so that just kind of gives enough of a kind of surface tension to help subsequent coats adhere a little bit better so once that's had a couple of minutes kind of flashing off time we can go back in with a second coat and that seems to have come up quite nicely so should be the same process for the exhaust uh, first coat's probably got on a little bit heavier, and as you can see with the slightly shiny plastic from Hasegawa, uh, if you go on a little bit too heavy, you will get a little bit of kind of visual uh, effects you can see in the paint. But if you let that cure off, flash off properly, you can go back in the second and third coats will clear up any uh, issues you may see by going a little bit too heavy on the first coat. So basically everything on the underside is getting a UMP black coat. Uh, a lot of the parts, the call-outs, is semi-gloss black. 
in a lot of instances, I'll just leave the UMP black primer. At the end of the day, it's a curbside kit. It's very rarely going to be looked at on its underside. Uh, so I'm not overly concerned about complete accuracy. But saying that, the UMP black does actually have a little bit of a sheen to it. So it's a, it's a good substitute for semi-gloss black on many occasions. So as you can see, basically everything is getting a similar treatment. Relatively light first coat. And then once they've flashed off, we'll come back with a second, slightly heavier coat. I think most of the parts for the underside actually only needed two coats. A couple of parts needed three, but smaller parts like this looked pretty spot on with just two coats. And then while I'm at it, might as well get the wheels primed in black. So they're going to end up in Subaru Alloy Wheel Gold color from Zero Paints. Yep, Subaru Wheel Gold. But in the first instance, they're getting primed black. So again, it's a case of getting a nice light dust coat down. When it's really light and dusty, it flashes off incredibly quickly. Uh, so it is very in black in for what is essentially the second coat. And certainly the main important parts to get spot on are these front faces. Because uh, that's where the wheel colour will show a lot more on the kit. But I do try, like to try and get good coverage on the interior of the wheel barrel. Sometimes, maybe not so on this kit, but sometimes if they're a big wheel with a lot of space between the spokes, you can see right through into the barrel. So it is worth making sure you get the back face of the wheel and the interior of the barrel uh, painted completely. So first step of that is getting it primed completely. And in this case, as you can see, in pretty much one sitting, uh, I've almost got complete coverage out of what is essentially two coats of paint. So all those parts are left to dry. As you can see, I'm still wearing a glove from the uh, priming session. So we've got a little bit of brush painting uh, just to fill in the wheel arches because the color call out for them is black. So I think it's a matte black this time using a slightly wider brush from Army Painter and just hand painting in those details. So as I've said before, brush painting actually can be quite therapeutic. It's quite enjoyable. Uh, it's something that's not done as often by a lot of modelers as it used to be, uh, but I still quite enjoy it. So there's a nice, easy kind of delineation to follow on the underside of the chassis that makes it easy to brush paint. So as you can see, I've speeded up the footage because you don't want to sit here and watch me hand brush paint four wheel arches in black. So I've just speeded it all up. As you can see, I just work my way around each of the wheel arches. Uh, the the black from Re Revel covers very, very well. Uh, so I think pretty much it's a one coat job here. So once I'm done and dusted and happy with that, the kind of engine, drive shaft and gearbox all kind of in one part. Need a little bit of detail painting. Bottom of the engine uh, is getting painted in. Uh, I think that's Ravel Silver, which, if I check the paint call outs, yeah, so that is 190 Silver Metallic from, well, 36190 from Ravel. So once again, just a little bit of detail painting. Take it nice and steady, multiple coats if necessary. Don't worry about coverage, just make sure you get down a nice smooth coat of paint. Uh, so the rear diff also gets treated to the same color metallic. So it's the same process. Nice and gently around your demarcation, nice smooth strokes. Don't worry about coverage on the first coat. If it covers, it covers. If it doesn't, just go back and do a second coat. 
Uh, if you try and force more paint onto it, you'll get visible brush marks. Uh, the surface won't look as good. But of course, given this is the underside of the kit and no one's ever going to look at it, I could have painted this bright pink and it probably would never get looked at. But how's ever, reasonably following the uh, the color callouts in the instructions. So, but all those parts have been painted, ones have been brush painted, a few parts have been airbrushed as well. You can start the assembly of this. Uh, so, there's a little bit of a mount and support which sits above the drive shaft and offers a guide for the exhaust, which you'll see being installed later. But that part goes in before, we'll say, the drive shaft and uh, main kind of prop shaft. So there's a couple of locating points, a little bit of CA glue on each of them, and that all pops nicely in place, albeit slightly off screen. So a little bit of pressure just to make sure it seats correctly, and that's all done. So all those parts that were primed earlier, some of them were painted in metallic colors. The brake discs, for example, were painted in Revell steel. Uh, and once that's done, no, sorry to tell a lie, they were painted in Vallejo Model Air steel. Uh, once that's been cured, I can go back in and paint the brake discs black, which was the color call out in the instructions. I couldn't find any very good reference pictures that showed anything different. So I've gone with the instruction call out in this instance. But as they're got a kind of clear delineation on the individual brake discs, it's easy enough to paint calipers using a brush. So a variety of other little call outs were used on the suspension components. They were masked up and sprayed as necessary. And also the front subframe also has one of its parts with a call out of silver, which I think for this one I've used Vallejo model air silver. Thinned a little bit with UMP thinner and sprayed through the UMP apex. So once that's had a little bit of curing time, can remove the masking tape. And once again, I'm not being particularly careful uh, but absolutely no issues with paint lifting whatsoever. Those kind of dust coats of primer really do help set a base for the subsequent coats. Uh, and then once that's fully cured, that stays in place, even in the face of masking tape, albeit detached masking tape. So as you can see, once masking tape is folded over and stuck to itself, it's actually not as easy to remove. So you do need to be a little bit careful at this stage, uh, particularly with smaller and flimsier components. You don't want to be pulling on that tape too hard because you might end up breaking parts. But as I said, I'm not too worried about paint lifting and I've seen no occurrences of that during this build so far. So with all those parts painted, you start adding components to the front subframe. Uh, so there's a main kind of cross support. Uh, once that's in place, can add in the individual suspension struts. Uh, so the ones for the front are quite obvious because they've got the additional parts which will uh, allow the steering. Uh, to operate so it's kind of the steering rack which runs across both those parts so there's a separate little stub for those to attach to so they can be a little bit fiddly uh, particularly because the kind of front suspension components are not glued in place at this stage uh, so they're just sat in uh, their recesses in the wheel arch and then basically it's the subframe will sit on top and that'll ensure that the front suspension uh, is held securely in place. Although still free to move to allow those front 
suspension parts to be a little bit poseable to simulate steering. Uh, so once again, a couple of dots of CA glue uh, in the appropriate locating places. Pop the subframe in place and that's done. So then there's the addition of the uh, sump guard. So that's got, I think, four attachment points. Once again, a little bit of CA glue dropped in place and then that can be securely attached. So with that complete, it's time to move on to the rear suspension. That, of course, will be glued in place because that doesn't need to rotate. Uh, so there's the main suspension parts or the main shock parts for uh, each side. So those should easily line up with the drive shaft. So just a little bit of force to get them to sit into the recess. Uh, and then there's like a kind of trailing arm type device which will sit uh, basically straddling across the rear prop shaft but also sitting on the bottom of the shock itself and that pops in once again with a little bit of ca glue so that's then repeated on the other side uh so basically yeah exactly the same on the other side shock goes in and then there's the little subframe uh, trailing arm part, which sits across it. So just hold it for a couple of seconds, just to let the CA glue to set. So that in place, you can then add in the exhaust. So there's a couple of locating pins, uh, and then that sits across that metallic part that was added at the very start of populating the parts on the chassis. And that is the main chassis part concluded. Then need to pop a poly cap into each of the brake discs. A little bit of CA glue on the, the hub, shall we call it, at the bottom of the shock. Uh, so these parts turned out to be a little bit fiddly. Uh, the actual locating points are not very positive. They're a little bit vague, uh, but they are there and the brake discs will line up appropriately. So make sure you check the, ins the instructions, make sure you get them oriented correctly. And then repeat that for each of the four corners. So let's head back to me for final summary. Now, Nope. Now. Phew. Whoa. That was a lot of work. Uh, yeah, so we've covered a lot in part two. Uh, so we've got the interior done. Struggled with the seat belts. Uh, this time the, the, the ribbon I have is a little bit thicker. And I think the Hasegawa photo etch is, you know, pretty accurate, small. Very, very small. So. That was reasonably challenging to get done, but I got through it. Uh, I think the interior looks okay. Looks good. Uh, chassis and running gear done as well. So basically all the major components are done. Uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm happy with the progress. I mean, if you watch part one as well, you'll see generally the paint's gone down fine. Decals went down great. Clear coat. Yeah, sort of good. You know pretty good a little bit of work to fix it that'll get covered in part three uh but aside from that i'd say been really happy with the progress of this so uh if you're new here don't forget to subscribe if you've liked the video please pop a like uh please leave a comment as well if you want thank you to everyone who's watched if you've sat through it all so far i'm not going to hang around and, and talk for too long because you've sat through enough and probably listened to me enough for one day already so without further ado we're going to call it quits that's the finish thank you all for watching i'll see you all in part three which will hopefully come up very very soon and that will be the finish for this video build series so as you can see with part one and part two we've got all the major big bits all together part three is going to combine them all and get us 
right to the end. So thank you for watching. I'll see you very, very soon. Bye bye for now.